the government of the Republic of Kenya announced that they have a program, namely providing free education to their citizens through radio broadcasts. The only requirement is to bring a birth certificate. The news then went viral and made parents flock to take their children to elementary school to register their children, to get education. On that occasion, there was something unique, because in the middle of a sea of small children, there was an old man who also came to register. He is Kamani Marouj. He came to the school to study. He was then approached by a woman named Jane Abinchu who was the principal and a teacher named Alfred. Marouj immediately gave Jane flyers with free school information. Jane, who knew what Marouj meant, explained that schools were for children only. However, Marouj disagreed with Jane's statement, because the information he got from the radio was that school was free for everyone, not just for children. Alfred who heard those words felt ridiculous with Marouj's request. He took Jane back to work, because he felt they would waste hundreds of parents registering their children if they had to serve the old man. After all, if he want to study, Marouj must have his own books and stationery, said Alfred. The next day, the first teaching and learning activities began. While Jane was teaching, Alfred approached her in class and asked Jane to come out. He intends to inform Marouj's arrival. Alfred immediately approached Marouj and as usual he asked Marouj to come home. Marouj will never be accepted to school, because he doesn't wear a uniform. Alfred thought that Marouj's life was already difficult, for sure Marouj would not be able to fulfill the requirements, because he did not have the money to buy a uniform. At that time, Jane approached Marouj with discomfort, asking why an old person like Marouj was so eager to go to school. Marouj told her if he wanted to learn to read. Jane, who knew that, was eager to help him. However, Jane could not do anything, because they teach too many students. Being rejected many times keeps Marouj from getting discouraged. He was determined to meet those requirements. He then went somewhere to buy clothes with the money from selling his chickens. Then went at home. He sewed himself to make a school uniform and cleaned his shoes to make them look proper and acceptable at the school. The next day, he was ready to go to school fully dressed and with his stationery. However, when he arrived at the school gate, he was approached by Alfred and Jane. Jane didn't expect that Marouj was so serious about going to school. Jane is impressed with his efforts and decides to take Marouj in. Even though Alfred had warned her, there would be problems for her if she accepted Marouj. But Jane still doesn't care about the risk, because she feels she is the principal of the school. She accepted Marouj happily, because Jane is known as a very good person and she really cares about education. Even when her husband, Charles, asked her to stop, she refused. Because, she feels the country really needs her to educate the life of the nation. While in class, Marouj was laughed at by the kids there, because he looked weird. The old Marouj still attended elementary school. However, Marouj was not embarrassed. He was very confident in greeting the other children and said that he would study with them. The first lesson begins. However, because it was the first time in his life going to school, he couldn't hold a pencil properly. Jane who knew about that, immediately taught him. With that lesson, Marouj was very happy, because he could follow his lessons well. When it was time to go home from school, while on the way home, Marouj was noticed from a distance by one of the student's parents named Kamal. All he knows is that Marouj also attends the same school as his son. He didn't seem to accept it because old people also attended school. At the same time, Marouj was also ridiculed by his peers, because they saw the old Marouj still wearing his uniform and going to school. Arriving home, Marouj also repeated the lessons he learned at school. However, he was shocked by a kick at his door telling him not to come to school, because school is for children. The next day, the next lesson begins. The lesson made it difficult for Marouj and he couldn't focus on his studies. He was also asked to come forward. However, due to his hearing impairment, he didn't even pay attention to what Jane asked him to do. On that day, Alfred did a neatness check on the students. When it was Marouj's turn, it was noticed that his pencil was dull, so Alfred asked him to sharpen it first. When he was about to sharpen his pencil, suddenly Marouj became confused because he remembered his past. When he calmed down, Jane was forced to tell him that it would be better if Marouj was not at school, because she was worried that the same thing would happen again in the future. Jane also asked about the bracelet that Marouj was wearing. Unsuspected by her, it turns out that Marouj is one of the rebels against BRITISH colonialism. In the past they fought to liberate the land of Kenya which was colonized by the BRITISH. Those arrested were then tortured and forced to revoke their oath to protect Kenyan soil. Marouj was even tortured once with a sharp pencil stuck in his ear. On another day, Marouj, who incidentally is a grandfather, was able to tell other children a story, thus creating excitement among them. However, that made Alfred feel that what Marouj did would become a problem in the future. Day by day Marouj is doing well at school. In fact, people on the radio have started talking about a grandpa who is still in school. During lunch break, a student named Kamal got into a fight with another student. Seeing this, Marouj came to him and beat Kamal to teach him a lesson. The commotion made the teachers panic and immediately stopped Marouj. At the same time, a member of the school council named Capruto came to the school and was angry at the commotion, not only because of the fight, 
but also because he heard the news that there was an old man who was a student at his school. Capruto is furious and asks Jane to kick Marige out, then transfer him to an adult school. However, Jane tries to convince Capruto by telling him that Marige is one of the war veterans and Jane asks him to give Marige a chance. Capruto even talked about tribal issues, that indeed before independence, Kenya was divided into two. The Margi tribe is a tribe that chose to fight for independence but the Capruto tribe is a tribe loyal to the BRITISH. Hearing this made Maruj angry and also took issue with Capruto, who came from a tribe that had no contribution whatsoever to Kenya's independence, apart from fawning over the BRITISH colonialism. Jane became angry, because according to her, a situation that was already independent should not have any ethnic differences. There is only one Kenya, Jane even thought that Maruj might not really be fighting the BRITISH, because if he did he would be dead already, and at that time Maruj told her that he had a family. He had a wife and two children who were killed in front of his eyes by the BRITISH. The debate finally stopped there. Jane still wants to help Maruj, finally deciding to meet the Minister of Education with the hope that she can teach Maruj the school there. She tries to convince the minister's mother. However, her efforts were still unsuccessful. The minister thinks that this school opportunity is only for children, so that they become useful people for the country of Kenya. This news Jane conveys to Maruj. He was forced to change schools in an adult's place in the city, if he wanted to continue his education. So, the next day, Marouge was forced to walk several kilometers to the school in town, because he didn't have the money to take the bus. Arriving in the city, he even looked like a madman. The school situation in the city is very different from that in the village. In the city, the students have no desire to study and the atmosphere is not very conducive. Moreover, the lessons weren't basic lessons for Marouge. After returning from town, Marouge came to Jane and said that he could not attend adult lessons and begged Jane to accept him again at the school. He just wanted to learn to read. Because when he was kids he did not have enough economic ability to go to school. He said that he had a letter from the president that he had to read himself. That is the reason why he was so desperate to learn to read. Jane, who knows about it, tries to help him and begs Capruto to reconsider his decision. However, the attempt was still rejected. Marouge, knowing Capruto's statement like that, felt disappointed and left Jane. The next day, while at school, Marouge comforts the children in class one last time as a goodbye. Seeing that, Jane decided to accept Marouge. However, not being a student, but being her companion so he can entertain the children in class. That also made Marouge very happy. Because of his virality at the time, reporters from several countries were interested in interviewing Marouge. They wanted to cover a grandfather who still wanted to attend elementary school and because of that interview, Marouge became famous everywhere to America. He is considered as a person who motivates everyone to be able to fight defeat and Jane is also in the spotlight because she is the one who gives Marouge a chance. However, the news turned into a conflict that made parents dislike Jane, so they staged a demonstration at school, because Jane was considered to be only seeking profit for herself so she could be famous. It also made Capruto go back to school and scold Jane's own decision. Capruto is still bringing up the Marouge tribe, so Jane keeps reminding them that they should have forgotten what happened in the past. Capruto's anger did not stop Jane from stopping Marouge, so that Marouge could read little by little. One day, Jane got a call from someone who was terrorizing her. The terror thinks that Jane is getting money behind the actions that help Marouge. It scared Jane makes she asked her husband to come home. It didn't stop there, Charles was also terrorized. He was informed that because he worked in the city, he was not aware that Jane, his wife often went out with other men. Time passed, his Kamal father was not pleased with Marouge's presence at school. He accuses Marouge of getting money from the media that reports on him. He shamelessly asked for Marouge's share. Because Marouge refused, Kamal's father also invited people to attack the school to harm him. So that one day, Jane's school was attacked. However, for Marouge who is a former veteran, confronting and expelling people who make noise is easy for him. Meanwhile, Kamal, who was once cynical about Marouge, now becomes interested with him. When Kamal was taught an interesting way to remember how to write numbers that until now he couldn't write them correctly, Marouge motivated him that he could become a good student someday. On that day, Jane received a letter from the Minister of Education and she did not expect that she would be transferred to Turkana, a village farther from where she lives now and of course making her even further away and unable to meet her husband. This made Charles ask Jane to resign. However, Jane stubbornly kept her job. This made Charles even more convinced that his wife was really having an affair. Jane did not expect that behind her good intentions, Charles instead accused and believed in slander from other people. Jane also gives the news to Marouge that she will be transferred to Turkana. Marouge, knowing this, wanted to go with her, but Jane refused because she didn't want any new problems to happen to him later. Jane thanks Marouge and asks him to come to school tomorrow for her farewell. The next day, farewell was held. The farewell made her student saddened by the departure of Jane and her student gave a farewell gift to their beloved teacher. 
but Marouche didn't want to come to school that day. Instead, he only watches the farewell from a distance. The following day, Caputo announced that he would bring in a new principal named Grace to replace Jane. However, it made the students and teachers unhappy with the decision. And that's right, on the day of Grace's arrival, the parents of the students greeted her with joy. However, not with the students. They were not happy, they even locked the school fence and threw stones at it. This made Grace leave the school, because she did not want to teach naughty children. It's different with Marouge, he keeps his pet goat as provision for taking the bus so he can go to the city to meet with the Minister of Education and also the President to fight for his rights. Arriving there, Marouge, who didn't want to wait long, immediately decided to go straight in to meet the President in the middle of the receptionist's carelessness. The figure of Marouge, who was already famous, was easily recognized by them. There, Marouge directly reminded them about the history of Kenya's struggle for independence. Previously in that room, the only thing stuck there was a photo of the Queen of Englaand until they achieved independence. The moment of silence, when Marouge opens his shirt and reveals his scars that the British did to him in the past, proves that he and other warriors have made sacrifices for the current generation. However, now they are even being unfair to a teacher who is struggling to educate the new generation. Marouge begged and asked that Jane be returned to her old school and then Marouge left the room. One day, while at school, Marouge didn't expect his struggle to pay off. Thanks to his struggle, Jane was able to return to the school. Marouge and all his students are happy to welcome Jane, who is now back at their school. Long story short, one day Marouge came to school with his letter because until now he couldn't read fluently and there were words he didn't know. He finally decided to ask for help from Jane or Alfred to read the contents of the letter. The letter was read by Alfred. A letter from the President of the Republic of Kenya containing thanks to Marouge for his past struggles. Therefore Marouge will receive compensation for his struggle for the Republic of Kenya. The list of places where Marouge was detained was also written in the letter. Jane and Alfred, who heard this, realized that Marouge's struggles when he was young were no joke. Years of being a prisoner, being tortured, even almost dying to fight for the country's independence. After knowing the contents of the letter, the atmosphere became emotional and Marouge became relieved. Marouge's efforts to get an education became the talk of the world. He holds the record for being the oldest person to have just started elementary school. He was even invited by the United Nations to give a speech to international leaders regarding the importance of education, because Marouge really inspires a new generation to go to school at an early age. Learning at an old age with cognitive abilities that begin to decline is not an easy matter. But it is not something that is impossible to do. Don't give up even though maybe at a young age we don't get the opportunity to enjoy education like other people. Do not feel embarrassed because it is considered too late to start learning.